What's up? It's Jessica. Come join me in this live. We're going to be talking to Mr. Gregory Diaz, who is poised to become a huge, huge star. What's up, Zach? Hey, Taylor. How you doing? And Gabby um, and Morgan. And I don't know how to say your name. Greg, what's up? Come on and join my live, Greg. Can you request it to join? So um, I just wanted to tell you guys something really cool. Greg Diaz is joining us any second, and he is literally poised to become a huge star. He has a huge movie coming out in 2021 with a little guy named Lin-Manuel Miranda, and he has a movie coming out on October 2nd, which I just learned about, I think, yesterday on Netflix. We'll talk about that and lots of other really cool things with Greg, if I can figure out how to get Greg on here. Um, so hold on, Greg. Hi, Mr. Gregory Diaz, the second, or no, the third, the third. Is that correct? Um, all right, so Greg, there you go. Uh, How Gregory, wait a Greg. Hey. What's up? How are you? How are you? Good. It's been so long. I yeah. Like it's been a while. You've like all grown up on me. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. And you? Good. I'm going to give everyone a little intro as to who Mr. Gregory Diaz is before we get into it. Um, basically, Greg, you came to our studio probably about seven years ago to take some classes. You did voiceover. You did musical theater. You did all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And you were awesome. And Thank you. Yeah, and so you wound up doing our agent and manager showcase with 20 scouting talent reps, and everybody wanted you, and you signed with a great agency. Now you've moved on to an even bigger fish, mm -hmm. UTA, which is the biggest, you know, I mean, one of the biggest out there, so congratulations, that's awesome news. Thank you. Um, who's your agent there, by the way, Greg? Do I know? Um, I am with Ryan, and do you know Ryan? No, but a, a camp yeah. friend of mine, a childhood friend of mine, yeah. Rosenzweig, is a big agent there who hopefully you'll get to know at some yeah. point. She represents some really cool people, some really big stars. So, um, but wow. So you're in awesome hands now. Um, so Greg, you came to our studio about seven years ago. You did some classes. You did the agent showcase. You met your first big agent there, great by Coastal Agency. Yes. Um, and then you went on to book an off-Broadway show. You're a good man, Charlie Brown which I got to see you in, and I have a picture of us, and you were much, much smaller, and it was yeah. awesome. Thank you. And, and then you went on to book a little Broadway show called Matilda. Yeah. So did you start with them on the tour, or did you start on Broadway? I did a month on Broadway prior to the tour. Okay. Um, I was a Bruce Swing, and that was almost, um, it was almost like a way for me to get ready for tour to because on tour I played Tommy, which was a part of the child ensemble. And um, Tommy also covered two other characters, Bruce and Nigel. So um, Broadway was almost like training ground to get used to Bruce. And then I did Nigel on tour. Wow. So you played many of the roles in the children's ensemble of the show. Yeah, I played... Um, my main role was Tommy, but then I could also play Bruce or Nigel. So you were a swing in that sense. Yeah. Kind of. That's yeah. awesome, Greg. That's some really great experience. Then you also, in, in the middle of all of this, you'd film some major commercials. I saw you, I think it was a Honda commercial and an Apple iPhone commercial, right? Am I correct mm -hmm. in that? Yeah. Um, the iPhone commercial was actually the first like professional camera gig that I had booked the iPhone 6s commercial I believe and then after that I went on to do the Honda one yeah those were two huge national commercials which is an awesome gig if you can get it <laughs> um right and yeah. then you started an off-Broadway show called Zurich you were the lead of Pedro Pan which was about Cuban immigrants coming to the U.S. without their parents children coming to the U.S. without their parents off-Broadway, which was amazing. Um, so you've done a lot of things in a short amount of time. But the biggest thing, well, you've got two really big things happening right now. One is coming out in 2021, and we'll talk about that one first, the In the Heights movie, in yeah. which you play Sonny alongside Lin-Manuel Miranda, you guys, Anthony Ramos, you know him from Hamilton, you know him from A Star is Born, Jimmy Smith, Daphne Rubin Vega, who you know from Rent, 
Mark Anthony, the amazing singer. I mean, this cast is unbelievable. And a great director, the guy who did Crazy Rich Asians and the Step Up movies. So, I mean, come on. Uh, can you please tell me uh, a little bit about that experience, Greg? Yeah, um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It was absolutely, I, I guess I would just say like crazy. It was such a crazy and great experience and something phenomenal to be a part of. Um, I went in uh, a little starstruck from all the big names that I would be working with, but it was on. It was honestly just a surreal opportunity, and I'm super grateful to be a part of it. I saw that Lin Manuel Miranda, little known Lin, <laughs> he tweeted about your next project that is actually coming out sooner than In the Heights. Um, it's Vampires versus the Bronx, and it's a movie that's going to drop on Netflix, right, on October 2nd, I believe. Is that correct? Yep, that's true. So that is, and another student of ours, Jaden Michael, is in that, so I'm sure yep. you know him very well. But that is so cool. Um, when, did you film, when did you film that movie? Um, that was the summer of 2018. Wow. Okay, so sometimes it takes, I think people don't realize how long it can take to edit something. Yeah. And then to shop it around. And so yeah, the process was, can take a while. Right. When did you film In the Heights, the movie? In the Heights was the summer of 2019. So you've been a busy guy. You're filming movies back to back in the <laughs> summer. That's pretty cool. Were yeah. you in regular school, Greg, during all of this? Like, tell us about that. So I have been attending your typical brick and mortar school pretty much since I was born. Um, uh, during Your Good Man, Charlie Brown, all the commercials I did, um, up until my Broadway run in Matilda, I was attending brick and mortar. And then for tour, because I was going to be away for six months or so I decided to make a switch to online school mm -hmm. um I mean it just allowed me to be more flexible and pretty much like do my school work at a calmer pace than mm -hmm. my school was kind of asking for um right, and on tour you have to kind of have a tutor right Cause yeah you're moving from city to city so you have to be online but then did you go back to regular school after the Matilda tour was over yeah, I did. I, I went back. Uh, fortunately, my school saved my seat for me and they allowed me to go back for the seventh grade. Wow. And what grade are you in now? I'm a sophomore. What? In high school. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So you went, you did a little bit of online school when you were on tour, but mainly you've been in regular schools, in brick and mortar schools. Yeah. So actually, um, recently the beginning of the year before COVID and all that I decided to make the switch to online school um fully um I had always loved it from doing it after tour I told my parents that I wanted to do it but they weren't really so on board with it at the time right. um but things have been getting a little more busy now and we think that the move was one that was well deserved I mean especially because things are getting busier. Um, I do need a bit more flexibility, so right, yeah. Right, and by the way, now pretty much everyone's either online or doing a hybrid of online and in-person, right? Very few people are actually going to a regular school right now, so the timing is right for that. Um, what, okay, so tell us a little bit about, let's go back to In the Heights for a minute, because of the big, I mean, Lynn manuel <laughs> Miranda, we have to talk about this, right? Um, yeah. So tell me, like, what was it like to work with Lin Manuel Miranda? And the fact that he's tweeting you is pretty cool. Announcing <laughs> your other movie that's coming out October second, you guys on Netflix. Yes. But tell me about that, um, Greg. Like, what was that like? I mean, I the first time I met him in person was at the final callback for In the Heights, and just to like be in his presence was so surreal. I was like starstruck. It was like half of my body couldn't believe that I was here with him, but then my other half was like, all right, you're at work, like you gotta do your job. Um, so that was kind of hard to like, not just smile the entire time while I was singing my song or doing my monologue. But um, he's such a great person. He's a genius and he just won't admit it, but no matter how many times you tell him, he truly is a genius. He and is um, a genius. I mean, yeah. like, I think you went to that school, the Hunter School, and actually, I'm, I'm also a teacher. And when I student taught, I had to observe at Hunter. And those kids are literally four years ahead of their regular grade <laughs> level. So the kids who were in middle school were smarter than me. Like, they knew more about history. I was a history teacher for a half second. They knew more about history than I did, OK? So it was, 
So I'm telling you, this guy's an actual genius. Yeah, um, he's he truly is a genius, genius, and he's just he's so welcoming and warm. I mean, from the minute that I was hanging out with him after I had booked in the Heights, he I felt like I was a part of his own family. And did you shoot with him a lot? Did you film with him a lot? Like, what? How many scenes would you say are you in with him? Um, probably two to three scenes. He plays the Piraguero, mm -hmm. which is like a like an icy man, and um, I don't have that many scenes with him, unfortunately. But um, the ones I do, they definitely count. But he was on set, right? Was he on set while filming the entire movie? Was he, you know, yeah. thing and writing yeah, pretty and much. Stuff? Um, I mean, other than playing the Piraguero, he was also one of our producers on the film. And um, he was very involved with the music. Um, so whenever we were filming one of our songs, he would be on set there. Just, um, just, I mean, like he was just there to do his job, but also he was just having fun. He would watch. Right. So how <laughs> do you get over the nerves of A, performing with him, but B, as you said, like in the audition, it was nerve wracking, right? Um, so what do you do? Like, what advice do you have for young actors who might, you know, have nerves before they go out on stage or might be in the presence of somebody like a Lin-Manuel Miranda? And how do you handle those nerves? Yeah. Um, for me, I don't personally, um, whenever I go into an audition, the nerves are there like at the beginning, but it's kind of like a switch for me, which I think is I'm I'm pretty fortunate from where I can just like, once I step into the room, I kind of get like put my game face on, I'm ready to go. And kind of those nerves disappear with that. Mm -hmm. um, but I know some people who aren't like that and everybody has their own ways, you'll find it yourself. But I would really say, um, be professional, as professional as you can be, you know, go in having your lines memorized, um, whether it's having your lines memorized or on set and they're doing another scene and you're quiet, you know, or um, taking the directions well, as well as you can, or just doing what they're asking. Mm -hmm. and that's a hard thing to learn how to do, right? Because sometimes yeah. the director or maybe Lynn, I don't know who, is giving you direction <laughs> and you have to very quickly listen to what they're saying, take in the notes in. and then be able to change your performance on a dime. I find that is the hardest thing for any actor, but especially probably for a young actor. Um, how do you yeah. have that skill to be able to take direction so fluidly and quickly? I, I mean, again, very fortunately, I've been able to do that for quite a while. I mean, before I started working in the business, I've been able to do it pretty well. Um, but I have learned that asking questions helps a lot. You know, if you have a question, don't be afraid to ask it. Those people are there to help you. They want to see you succeed. Okay. Um, so if you have that question, don't be afraid to ask it. If you want to try something out, tell someone see what they mm -hmm. think. If they do it, then you do it. Right. That's, that's great advice to ask questions. Because I think people get intimidated and they're like, okay, I'll do what you say. And they really don't know what the director's looking for. And they just yeah. get nervous. Right. So that's a great thing. And that helps. I think that probably helps you with your nerves because you have a dialogue with that person about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I would gather for a, you know, for a kid like you being in such a big movie, a teenager now, um, you know, what, well, let me ask you something else. What made you want to perform? What made you want to be a performer, Greg? When did that happen for you? Um, ever since a young age, I was really, I guess I would just say into performing. Um, I would go into my living room and like dance to Michael Jackson and I would do the moonwalk to my best ability. Um, I mean, for whoever would watch, sometimes it would be my entire family. Sometimes it would be nobody. I was doing it to the couch or the dog. Um, but it wasn't until I saw Matilda on Broadway and I just thought to myself, like, these kids who are my age are up on that stage, dancing, acting, singing, all these things that I do at home. So why can't I do it? So um, my dad did some research. He found that they were holding open calls. And from that point on, I just made it my job to try and book Matilda. And I went to every open call I could and up until I booked it pretty much. Wow, cool. So you had, so perseverance. I mean, so in other words, you went on multiple auditions. I think that's a really good lesson for a lot of actors to, to learn is that it doesn't necessarily happen, you know, the first time you have to keep going out for the same job, right? So yeah. you went on many open calls for Matilda, you would say, until you finally booked the, the job? I went on at least three open calls and um, I made it to a couple final callbacks, but I, 
I think it was my third open call actually that I ended up booking Matilda. Wow, great. And somebody just asked, so I'll take it uh, from the audience here. Any tips, what was that question again? Any audition tips, Greg, that you have for young actors? Um, I think again, like I, how I said, um, try and be as professional as possible. That not only applies to being on set, but I mean, um, auditions, open calls, director sessions, anything that you're going into, um, be professional, have your lines memorized if you have them, um, you know, being quiet when you need to be, listening when you have to listen. Um, and I think really just always going in there, giving 110%, even if you mess up, as long as you're giving it your all, you're pretty much doing your job. Great. You, you've always been a very like centered, calm and mature person. So it's usually those people that I think wind up succeeding who have that kind of demeanor and this inner confidence always shown through. I, I just I know that about you. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So, OK, so what is something you had wished you had learned about the industry, you know, perhaps sooner? Like I know you pro you know, you, you're very fortunate. You have a great career. You've been on, you know, in many off Broadway shows. Zurich, you're a good man, Charlie Brown. You've been in Pedro Pan. You've been uh, also, you know, in Broadway, on Broadway and on the tour of Matilda. But what is something maybe you wish someone would have taught you about the industry when you were younger? Yeah, um, I definitely went in a little scared. Um, so I really just wish I knew that everything has its own process. Um, whether it's the casting process or you already booked something and it's, or like how we talked about the process of how long a film can take to make it to the screen. Um, everybody has their own path um, and you always have those people that want to see you succeed, especially your parents. They're your number one fans. Um, I think it's really important to just know that your career is pathed by you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you have to create your own, not luck, but you have to create your own career path for yourself and you have to persevere through the hard times. You have to be persistent. Is that something yeah, you would say? Definitely. Okay. Awesome. So now you've been on film sets. You've, you've done it all at this point, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> you've really done it all. Have you done voiceovers, Greg? I, I don't recall. I have done some voiceover work. I don't think, unfortunately, nothing that's made it out mainstream but i have it's done some professional stuff <laughs> jobs still, yeah. you still have experience in the booth and working in voiceovers which is really cool so literally you have done it all <laughs> um so any advice for someone who's going on a film or tv set you also i should mention were on um you were in the show unbreakable kimmy schmidt you also were on new amsterdam um so you've had a lot of experience on sets at this point so any advice for young actors or for anyone, an adult actor, going on a film or TV set for the very first time? Like, it's a whole um, other ballgame than theater, right? Yeah, it, it is a bit different. Um, I started out with theater, and it did take a bit of adjustment to make from theater to TV and film, because they are similar, but also different in their respectful ways. Um, I would definitely say theater is a lot more... I guess you could say dramatic in a sense than TV and film might be. So that definitely took a little bit of adjustment mm -hmm. um, to kind of tone it down. Yeah. But um, for on set life on TV and film, it's, well, I mean, you're on a set compared to on a stage. So it's very, it's a very different atmosphere. It may, it's a little hectic. So that can kind of scare you a bit. Um, which it definitely did for what me at first. Hectic? There's a lot of people around. There's a lot of like things this. going on. Yeah. Right. But um, everybody knows what they're doing. Everybody's there to have a good time and get their work done. Um, so there's nothing really to worry about. As long as you're really focused on yourself and you know what you're doing, you're prepared beforehand, um, you persevere through the day, you should How succeed. How do you out? Like on a set, what's different from a show is everybody is quiet and seated in the audience watching you and giving you their full attention. Whereas on a set, it's not that they're not giving you their full attention, but you've got the guy who's handing lights. You've got the guy who's handling the boom mics and the microphones and the sound. And you've got the director over here. You have the script supervisor over there. You got somebody doing rewrites over there in the corner. You've got a lot of people milling around this set. And then you have to be able to like focus on your scene partner with all these other random people around, which, you know, I, 
when you're in a show, you're able to really live in the life of the show that you're in um, without too many distractions. Maybe somebody's cell phone goes off, you know, people are mm -hmm. walking in the aisles in the middle of the show. But mainly you're in your own little world of the show. And then on a set, how do you block out all of those other distractions, all these people around you? I would definitely say it comes with experience. Um... I know for a fact, like when I was doing that iPhone commercial, it was a little hard for me to focus on what I was doing, even though I was just working with myself in that scene. Um, there was a lot of things going on. I had one person showing me how to use the iPhone, one person telling me how to eat my cereal. Um, I had people fixing my pajamas that I was wearing. So it can be a bit hectic, like I said, but um, I think it really just comes with the experience, the more experience you get out in the field. And um, again, that perseverance, just really focusing on what you're doing, you know what you're there to do, um, which can be hard for some that are younger who are getting into the business. But um, again, your parents are there to help. So you can always rely on them. Right. Um, okay, great. And then also another thing about films, I don't know if this is true for In the Heights because it was already a Broadway show. Um, did they change the lines a lot? Like there's, they're often rewriting films. Like there have, there are people on set who are hired just to do rewrites. Rewrites. Yeah. Constantly. So were there rewrites on that or on the Netflix movie that's coming out October 2nd, Vampires versus the Bronx? Um, yeah, of course. I think there's always rewrites going on. Even when they say they have a final script, it's never really the final script. You end up getting a new stack on your desk almost every week with rewrites or anything that's really going on. They change the scene. They change your lines in the scene. Um, they take someone out of a scene, put someone in a scene. Uh, for In the Heights. That? Yes, tell yeah. me, sorry, keep going, for, In the Heights. For In, for in the Heights, um, there, the dialogue is a bit different from the show. The music is a bit different. Um, there's some, some lines that are taken out, some lines that are put in, some lines that are just changed. Um, I know for In the Heights, there was a lot of rewrites on music though. Um, I mean, we could be in the middle of rapping or singing the scene. And then once they hit, say cut, the rewrite person would come up or a producer would come up maybe like, hey, are you okay with changing this to this? And you just kind of had to do it on the spot. That seems intimidating. <laughs> you have to like change things so quickly. Um, what do you do? do you, how do you memorize your lines, Greg? Like what are some tips you have for memorization? Yeah, I do. I, I really just I sit down and I read through the entire thing first. Um, I read everybody, not only my lines, I read the actions, the other characters lines, my characters lines. And then once I read through it at least once, I like to highlight my lines it just makes it easier. And then I also um, focus on my actions, my characters actions, or whatever I can portray in that scene. Um, and then do you I mark really, up your script? Do you underline words? Do you? Yeah. So after I read through it, I'll just read my lines and then I'll look at the other characters' lines, but I'm really just trying to focus on my lines at that point. I'll write down notes, like what I think the infliction is or the intention on that line. And then um, once I have all my notes down, I'll just sit down and just kind of like zone myself in as much as possible and try to focus on those lines. Um, Luckily for me, I'm pretty quick with memorization. So I have, I, I can do it pretty quickly. I'll usually read it like, I'll read like one line three times and I usually have it down. Um, mm -hmm. For me, I kind of got to like sleep on it. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I never really say I have it memorized on the first day. I say it takes, for me, it's a two day process. I'll read through the entire script and have it memorized on that one day, but I need to sleep through it. And maybe the next day I forgot the it in that sentence, or I added an extra thing in that sentence that wasn't supposed to be there. So then that second day, I'll look at the script again, check what I messed up or what I added in and do, do try and fix it from your there. lines out loud, Greg, or do you just read them silently in your head? Um, no. So I have three different techniques. Um, I'll, I like to do it in the mirror because I really can just like be with myself. Um, so that's one thing I do. The other one is just in my head. I'm just looking at the paper, reading it in my head. And then the other one is doing it out loud. Sometimes I'll ask for help from other people or sometimes I'll do it out loud in the mirror or just in like on the couch out loud. 
So everybody has their own process, because that's interesting. I haven't heard of somebody doing it in the mirror before, but I have heard of people, you know, um, well, everybody does it differently. Have you ever written outlines? Like, have you ever written things out? To oh, yeah, of them? course. Yeah. Um, I, I, I do that a lot whenever I'm having trouble um, pronouncing something. If it's a little bit hard for me to say, I'll just write it out the way that I think it should be or like the way that it makes sense to me. Um, and that tends to help me understand how to pronounce it better. Okay. Do you bounce your lines off of anybody? I know your dad is also a talent manager, Greg Diaz. Uh, what's his name? 3D management, right? Yes. So your dad, do you ever run lines with him? Yeah, of course. Um, he likes to run lines with me and I enjoy it just as much. So whenever I do get a scene, we try and run our lines together as much as possible. Um, he's also the person that helps me with all my, my, um, self tapes at home. So he's that, he's the person that's reading with me. So most he's of the time. a good actor too. Then. Does yeah. Have a family would you say? <laughs> um, definitely the drama runs in my family. <laughs> um, I don't know so much about on stage or in front of a camera. Some of us are a little shy, but the drama is definitely there. Awesome. Um, okay. Tell me, let's go back to your days on Broadway and Matilda and also off Broadway. What was your favorite thing about being on Broadway? Um, it's live, you know, anything could really happen. I mean, somebody could fall and they just, you got to keep on going. It, it, that can be stressful in itself. Right. Um, just that idea of it's live and you never know what's going to happen. Uh, somebody's shoe could fly off the stage, but you got to keep on going. The show must go on. And what was the craziest thing that happened when you were on Broadway? Um, Broadway wasn't that crazy, fortunately. Tour, I guess because I was there a little bit longer, there was a couple things that happened. Um, during Matilda, there's a scene where we're putting blocks into this uh, like hollow gate, pretty much, and going through the alphabet and saying different words that go with each letter. Um, there was two people that would climb those letters on the gate. So if you didn't put in a letter at the right time, they could miss their step and fall, which did happen occasionally. Um, and some of them would tend to get pretty high. But um, we never had any crazy falls, fortunately. It was just like a little slip. Um, that was one thing that happened a couple of times. So we had to like lock these tables together to push it down stage. Um, and that was my job. So sometimes I forget to put the lock in uh -oh. or one time I think I forgot to take the lock out so it couldn't really separate. Oh, um, you're like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, would, sometimes what would, happen? what would happen if it wasn't locked? Was it dangerous? Um, not that much. It just kind of slowed the show down a bit, which isn't ideal. But um, I mean, sometimes it just wouldn't budge and you couldn't do anything. For that, we had situations where like, if something didn't happen, I would stay. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, there is things like that because it is live. You never know what's going to happen. So they do put other ideas into play in mm -hmm. case something bad does happen. Crazy. Okay. And what was the hardest thing about being on Broadway was the was there something that you found challenging honestly I think the best thing is the hard thing it's live so you know you you got to try and do the same thing eight times a week and you got to keep your voice nice and clean and warmed up every night and I mean and how there's do you a lot do that, that how do you keep your voice you know kids I mean listen you're you were a kid when you were in the show right you're gonna yeah. want to hang out with the other kids during the day and have a good time and stuff. So how do you keep your voice? How do you make sure you're not overusing your voice to the point where you damage it? No, yeah, um, fortunately on Matilda, they did have vocal coaches that worked with all the kids together. Um, honestly, I just called Matilda one big workout. It was like a six month workout, um, whether it was like vocally or physically, just to, the kids do a lot in the show. So a lot of us were pretty fit and in shape. Um, <laughs> We would, we had warm-ups before every show. Some kids would do their own warm-ups back at the hotel, but every night before a show, we would warm up um, physically and vocally all together um, because there is a couple things that the kids do, like uh, doing Supermans on the swings. We would have safeties before every show to make sure everything was working, everything was hooked where it should be. So they definitely had the precautions in place. <laughs> yeah, they better, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. What would be a dream role of yours? 
Oh boy, I really like superheroes. I would love to play a superhero in like a DC or Marvel movie, or honestly just be involved in a DC or Marvel movie. Maybe just not play superhero, just be like their best bud or something like that. That would just be such a great opportunity. Um, I would also love to work with like other great directors like Steven Spielberg, Quentin Tarantino, greats like that. That would be awesome. Just putting that out there in the world. <laughs> <laughs> You've worked with some pretty cool people so far, my gosh. Um, Okay, who or what is your inspiration? Who, who inspires you? Um, definitely my parents. You know, they worked really hard for me to try and create a life for me that they didn't really have growing up themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, business-wise, I look up to a lot of actors. I mean, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Timothy Chalamet, Tom Holland, those younger actors that I can kind of relate to. Mm -hmm. um, and then just great, like Denzel Washington, Meryl Streep, Robert De Niro. Yep, these are the best, Greg. <laughs> one day we're going to see you in that role. Thank one you. Of those. Um, all right, what is a fun fact you would like people to know about you that perhaps they don't know? Um, I'm a super picky eater. Um, I, my palate has fortunately expanded over the years, but I pretty much have the diet of like a four-year-old. So <laughs> I'm really into chicken fingers and macaroni and my favorite food ever is um pizza so <laughs> yeah so okay nice well listen i think i have the same diet as you <laughs> but you you're you're very fit for a guy who eats like that now do you have to work out greg to stay in shape as an actor do you do any of that stuff um yeah i do tend to work out pretty often uh, unfortunately because of covid that was kind of hard to go to the gym every now and then but um I mean, I mean, not only going to the gym, I like to skateboard, bike and stuff like that. I like, I like to be outside. I'm definitely an outdoors person. Um, right. I guess another fun fact, I actually used to want to be a professional baseball player. Um, my dad, that was kind of his dream and like pretty much everyone else in my family. So I was like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna try it out. Um, I used to want to be a Yankee, but nice. um, it was just kind of like one day I was like, man, let me try this acting thing. <laughs> Maybe I'll be an actor instead. Hey, listen, they're both pretty cool, you know, things to do. Pretty cool careers. Um, one more quick thing. So have you ever gotten starstruck when meeting or working with a celebrity? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, In the Heights just has such a great cast and even the crew. I mean, uh, for my final callback, it was with Anthony Ramos. And um, I mean, being such a huge fan of Hamilton, Mm -hmm. uh, I absolutely love John Lawrence, uh, which mm -hmm. is the character that Anthony plays. And just like, again, like my body was just so like half of myself was like, oh my God, like I'm in a room with Lin Manuel Miranda and Anthony Ramos. But then the other half was like, all right, like I got to read my lines with him. Right. Um, but he's uh, like, same like Lin, he's super nice, super warm, welcoming. And I mean, today we're pretty much best buds. So no way. He seems like a really sweet person just from like his you know, her, his public persona seems like a really good, he's a really good guy. Yeah, he is. Um, that is cool, man. So you're in with your, with the big leagues there, hanging out with <laughs> Anthony Ramos and Lin-Manuel Miranda. I mean, can you ask for anything more? This is pretty cool. Um, well, listen, I, one more question. Mm -hmm. Anyone, is there a, a, a person that you view as a mentor? Would you, would you say that, is there an actor or a director or somebody that you look up to as a mentor other than your parents? Um... Huh, a mentor. Or somebody who's mentored you through your career, perhaps. Is there somebody who really um, helped shape your career? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, before I started my career professionally, I attended this summer camp. It's called um, On Broadway PATP, Professional Performing Arts Training Program, I believe. It's at the Riverside Church um, uptown. Uh, Rima Webb and Daniel Cipher were both really big influences in my career. I just kind of like enjoyed performing and I saw the camp and I was like, I'm gonna try this out. I was probably like seven or so, but they were really the ones who pushed me to go on auditions because they kind of saw something that I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, honestly, if it wasn't for them, I don't think I would have been going on auditions. So mm -hmm. a big thank you to them. <laughs> they changed the course of your life for yeah. sure. Well, this is awesome. Well, thank you so much. I love talking with you tonight. And yeah, it was a I'm pleasure. I'm really proud of you and, and all of your success. And I just think it's super cool. And I can't wait to see in the Heights in 2021. But I can't wait to see on October 2nd, 
Vampires, Vampires versus, versus the Bronx. Bronx. Yeah. Which, is that like timed with um, Halloween kind of? Is that around the time of Halloween? Yeah, it is a bit um, spooky. It's also a bit of comedy. I guess that's how I would describe it, like a, a funny horror movie. <laughs> funny horror movie. That's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see that. So listen, I hope you have some exciting projects in the works. I don't know if you can talk about anything else, but um, do you have anything you could tell us about? Um, unfortunately, not right now. I'm not working on much. Uh, we are, you know, dealing with the pandemic right. and things are starting to pick up, thankfully. Um, I'm looking forward to auditioning a lot more, though. Cool. Awesome. Well, listen, congrats to you. And I enjoyed talking to you and say hi to your dad. Thanks, Greg. GB3 <laughs> Management. Great yeah. management firm. Thank you so much for having me. Congrats. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye. Hey, guys. So I'm still here. If you want to ask a couple of quick questions, just to let you know, I mean, what a good guy. So down to earth and you know, he's worked with some awesome people. So, wow, I'm living vicariously through him right now. Um, hopefully, we will see you guys. We've got a pop rock song interpretation masterclass this Monday. What's up, Greg Diaz? Um, this Monday with Alex Boniello from Dear Evan Hansen, Spring Awakening. He's a producer on Hades Town. He was in the American Idiot Tour. So there's no one better to learn from than Alex Boniello. Um, also, we have a free virtual open house next week on Tuesday and Wednesday night. Join us on Tuesday. We're going to demo our musical theater programming. And then on Wednesday, on camera and voiceover, all with amazing voiceover on camera and Broadway actors. Uh, so you can get a taste of what fall 2020 is going to look like. And um, we have lots of six-week classes online right now. Everything from musical theater, dance, call experience, um, on-camera comedic acting with three-time Tony nominee Christopher Fitzgerald. He's also a major TV actor. He is fantastic and the funniest guy. He was the original Ogie and Waitress, Bach and Wicked, a million shows. He's wonderful. And we have that class for ages 12 through 20s. And we have the same class for um, younger kids with Sean Patrick Doyle, who was in Kinky Boots. He's been in a million TV shows as well. We love him. Um, so that's gonna be a really wonderful comedic on-camera acting class. Um, and then we have musical theater audition technique with five major Broadway stars. We've got Tony nominees teaching, major Broadway stars. You definitely know them. Um, like Ray Henson from Mean Girls and Caitlin Kinnanen of The Prom and Ben Fankhauser of Newsies and Ben Cook of Mean Girls and a million other shows. So we have all these wonderful people, Adam Jacobs of Aladdin. They're all going to be teaching each week like a different master class uh, on audition techniques. So singing, dancing, acting, the whole nine yards. And then it ends in a showcase for agents and family and friends. We're doing a virtual play, but there's only three spots left. And it's called Almost Maine, written by a Tony... Um, nominee named John Cariani. He's a major Broadway star. He wrote this fabulous play. It's two person scenes and monologues. So it's perfect for a virtual format. We have an agent showcase for ages 18 and over with 10 scouting talent reps on September 23rd. And we have another agent showcase with 20 scouting talent reps. That's where uh, Greg Diaz met his agent on October 22nd. So many master classes with huge Broadway stars like Andrew Keenan Bolger of Newsies fame, um, Andy Miantis of Les Mis, and all sorts of amazing shows. He was on Smash, the TV show, one of the stars of that. So lots of really cool things coming up. Take a look, you guys. Hope to see you soon. Um, if you have any quick questions for me, I'll try to take one right now. Um, but other than that, I'm thank you for, for watching tonight. And Greg Diaz, we're cheering him on the whole way. I think I'm just going to say goodnight because it's a school night, right? Stay healthy, stay happy, and we will see you soon, guys. Thanks. Bye.